It is time for the Monday morning mailbag where you, the listeners, have a say in what we talk about today. We asked you for questions, and y'all delivered. We got, uh, what, 10 or so, maybe a dozen or so questions that we got in our mailbag today, mostly all Leaf-related, too. So it should definitely check that box off for Locked On Leafs-related content. But, uh, so yeah, that'll be fun. We'll get to those questions shortly. Also, some Maple Leafs getting some love around the league in some of the award ballots. We'll tell you who that is and what awards those are on today's edition of Locked On Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast, one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's Brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me is my co-host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leafs-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from if you haven't already. And now you can also catch us up uh via video format on YouTube. We're, what, less than 50 subs away from that 1,000 sub mark, which is the goal. 956 right now. Once we get to 1,000, 956, wow. Once we get to 1,000, which hopefully we can do after this video, if y'all do it correctly, uh, we will be giving away a Austin Matthews, or not an Austin Matthews, but at least Jersey. I was about to say an Austin Matthews stick, which was the last giveaway that we did. I was going to say, you just come upon a massive Austin Matthews stick from the card convention or something? Yeah, no, I did not. I did not. Uh, and I did pick, have a couple of nice pickups from the card show. Um, hopefully, if anyone was at Expo, uh, hopefully y'all had a good time. I know that I definitely have a good, had a good time. But no, uh, yeah, we're giving away a jersey once we get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, so we're gonna go through the Monday morning mailbag. It's gonna be a new weekly segment that Dave and I are gonna do. If you uh, want to submit your questions, what we're doing is on either Friday or Saturday, we're going to put out it's just a quick mailbag video that we're gonna be asking for your submissions. It's gonna be on the YouTube page, so locked on use YouTube page. So if you go to it. And then you'll be able to submit your questions in that specific mailbag, uh, Monday morning mailbag questions video. And then you could get it and we get our questions from there. So it's all nice, tidy in one little spot. So if you do want to contribute next week, that's how you'll be able to do it. Just keep an eye on our uh, on our YouTube page. All right, Dave, before we get into it, though, uh, I do want to let you all know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. And we have a couple of awards that have come out uh, that have come out already. We had the Jack Adams awarded on Friday. And then today the Selkie was awarded, or yesterday rather, last night. Um, so Sheldon Keefe actually got some love for the Jack Adams. Daryl Sutter won it uh, pretty handily, I would ask. Surprisingly, too, his first ever Jack Adams award. Were you surprised to see that was his first? I kind of was. Yeah, considering how long he's been in the league, it seems that he's coached, especially in L.A. Right. That was quite quite surprising. Luckily, he did get it because I think he did deserve it. Yeah. Now, although he says it doesn't matter for his resume, it's going to go on there anyway. Uh, But, yeah, Sheldon Keefe getting some love coming in at 11th place. He had one second-place vote and three third-place votes. I actually think that he didn't get enough love, to be quite honest with you. Um, I I thought that he would have got a little bit more votes, uh, more top three votes at at the very least. Um, But, I mean, at the end of the day, there's, there's so many great coaches to choose from, Sutter, Brunette, Gallant. I mean, it's it's so difficult, but I think Sheldon Keefe, you know, for him to be a top five team in the league and to see the special teams also take the massive leap that they took from last season to this year, I think certainly uh, was deserving to say that, you know, coaching played a role in that. And it's not just Sheldon Keefe, it's Sheldon Keefe and his staff, right? It's not just Daryl Sutter, it's Daryl Sutter and his staff. I know that you know, the head coach is the guy who gets most of the love, but also the rest of the assistants also get, uh, you know, they, they get 
it's their fair share of love uh, when you're talking about the Jack Adams as well. But yeah, so Sheldon Keefe uh, coming in 11th. Um, and then also the Selkie Award was given out, uh, and Patrice Bergeron wins it for a fifth time, which I think was a record. Fifth, uh, fifth, fifth award. straight, yeah, or fifth time, yeah, that was the most. Yeah, most by any player. So there, <laughs> Frank J may not have uh, the name on that trophy for much longer. It might become the Patrice Bergeron Trophy when that guy retires, because I mean it's the epitome of the award. Um, so he wins it, but a couple of Maple Leafs showing up on the ballot. So for this one, the award, uh, the award voters were able to put their top five. So this one's a top five ballot where the coach is only a top three. And there were three Maple Leafs who, who were given top five ballot consideration. Dave, can you name the three players? Um, I know I, David Kampf. Yes, David awesome. Camp did receive one, was it a one-fourth place vote, I think it was? Yes, one-fourth place vote for David Camp. Austin Matthews, because, you know, a lot of people lot his defensive play. Yep, Austin he, Matthews finished with two seconds, six third-place votes, four fourth-place votes, and five fourteenth-place votes. And obviously, uh, Mitch Marner, guy who plays on the PK. Yes, and then Mitch Marner finishing 16th in voting. And if you're on YouTube, you can see the entire voting right here. But Mitch Marner with one second place vote, one third place vote, three fourth place votes, and three fifth place votes. So a couple of Maple Leafs getting some love. Uh, look at Mason Marchment coming in just a couple of spots behind Mitch Marner. <laughs> A second place vote for Mason Marchment. You damn well know that came from some Florida Panthers beat writer. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mason Marchment, your runner up for the Frank J. Selke Award. I mean, whatever. <laughs> that one's a little odd. I, I'm a little surprised Sidney Crosby was as low as he was. He was 34th. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Crosby only getting one fifth place vote. Who in their right mind sat there and said, you know what? Mason Marchment deserves a second place vote, but like Crosby, not even top five. Absolutely not. Like what? That's just some of these voters, I swear, they should be. Well, and like, and I know Bo Horvat, pretty good defensive player. How did he get fewer votes than Jesse Pugliarvi? Yeah, or Michael Raffle. <laughs> it, it is oh, Rasmus Asplin. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I know, yeah. like, I'm not thrashing the Sabres or anything, but I think Bo Horvat, one of the better face off guys in the league. Yeah. Pretty decent pay- penalty killer for the Canucks. Yeah. Tell me he couldn't crack the top 20. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I'm with you. I'm with you. Should have not even sure. locked on Canucks fans. <laughs> Just pointing out the travesty that is. Exactly. Uh, so those are the two awards that have been named so far. Um, there's a couple more that'll be going over the next couple of days, I think. And then um, the award ceremony for the rest of them, where we're hoping Austin Matthews takes home a couple of pieces of hardware, will take place between games three and four of the Stanley Cup final in whichever team is uh, hosting the third and fourth game. So it's a little bit of a different situation. The series not going to take place in Vegas. I don't, we talked about this back when it went down. I'm not a huge fan of the way that they're going about the award ceremony this year. I would definitely rather wait like a week or so after the cup final finishes to, to get that in, but eh, whatever it is, what it is, I suppose. But I mean, if like Kale McCarr, if he wins Norris, is he going to be able to celebrate? No, it, is he even gonna go? Like, what dude's gonna have a nap the night before? You know what I mean? Like, ah, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting for sure how that whole thing uh, goes about. Uh, all right, one more quick piece of news before we uh, move on to the the Monday morning mailbag. Um, an update on former Maple Leaf, current Colorado Avalanche, uh, Nazem Kadri. Well, I guess the update is that there's no real update, but um, he is going to be out of the series for the. Uh, well, the remainder of the series uh, between the Colorado Avalanche and the Edmonton Oilers. But Evander Kane given a one-game suspension for his hit on Nazem Kadri, 
And I did see that, I think it was Darren Dreger reported that surgery is possible, which I guess would take him out for the playoffs. Yeah. Um, but there'll be more information on that uh, probably either later today or tomorrow, perhaps. But man, does that ever suck? That dude was having an unbelievable playoff. Yeah, no, it's unfortunate because I know there's been a lot of talk about the hit and all those things. It's the hate hit that I hate the most in hockey. Yeah. Um, maybe the chicken wing is the other one. But I, I've always contested those are the worst hits to take. And it's also unfortunate because it sounds like it's his thumb from what I'm hearing. Like, that's the injury. So, like, that's something you need. Right? <laughs> you got to be able to grip your stick and catch replace center. So, it's mm-hmm. not like he can you can disguise an injury like that. So, no, it's so unfortunate for Kaji because, you know, he's he's a big reason why Colorado has gone to where they are. Yeah. And he was having a good series, as you were saying. Like, that game two was his, like, breakout like game in terms of, like, just helping Colorado get over that mad, you know, the madness of the two games and put them – I mean, now they're ahead 3-0. So, you know, they can – you know, potentially win this series on Monday and then wait and see with Kadri, but I don't know. It's not looking good for him to to come back. No, no, it's not. Uh, but they're up 3-0, and the game four goes down tonight uh, in Edmonton with the Oilers trying to stave off elimination, uh, try to extend their season. Maybe we can get one more game at least of watching uh, Connor McDavid and, and our old pal Zach Hyman as well. Um, but there's a couple of questions in the mailbag that pertain to, you know, some players on the Edmonton Oilers. So I don't want to go too far into what's going on there, but uh, they also, they're in a bind. They're in a bind. Um, and then what, Tampa ends up winning to make it 2-1, to one, so they didn't fall down 3-0. All right, why don't we take a quick break? we we'll get back, uh, we'll get into the mailbag. We've got... 10 questions or so. We'll see how many we can get through here today. If not, we'll carry them over into next week, or maybe at some point we'll get to a couple more that will trickle, just kind of sprinkle in throughout the week perhaps. But uh, before we do, Dave, before we get into our mailbag, why don't we tell the good folks about uh, one of today's show sponsors, and that's Athletic Greens. Yeah, a product that I use every day. It's just one scoop. And, it, and I was able to absorb 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start my day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All of those things I listed. So in order, this is how Athletic Greens works. Obviously, you just take one scoop into a glass of water, glass, cup, whatever you drink in the morning. And that's it. Easiest way to get all the vitamins that you need for your day. So here's some facts here about Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens is a climate neutral certified company. In 2020, Athletic Greens purchased carbon credits that support projects protecting old growth rainforests. For every purchase, they donate to organizations helping to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry in the U.S. In 2020, Athletic Greens donated over 1.2 million meals to kids in 2020. Now, the other good thing about athletic greens is it costs you less than $3 a day. So you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health, your, your health. Make it easy. Athletic Greens giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano, Dave Moore City with me. We are your hosts here at Locked On Leafs, a daily Maple Leafs podcast. And this is going to be a new Monday segment. So as we head into the offseason, there's a less and less Leafs content, I suppose. So, you know, we got to figure out a way to try and get 
get that content in there. And, and I want to know what the listeners want to hear about, because at the end of the day, our goal is to please your ears and your needs. And what better way is to quite literally ask you, what do you want us to talk about? Hence the mailbag. So each and every Monday, uh, Dave and I, throughout the duration of the off season, we're going to be going through a mailbag and answering a whole bunch of questions that you guys have. Again, this could be, you know, a free agent that you like, and you want our thoughts on this could be a trade proposal. You could want to know what our, our favorite, you know, chocolate bar is. It really could be anything today happens to be all hockey questions, but it could be anything. Um, and uh, so why don't we get right into it, Dave? Why, why don't we go with it? Uh, what's, what's the first question in the well, mailbag? Well, hold on. Before we get to our listener question, you did tease on your Twitter account that you wanted to talk about some things that you got at the Toronto Sports Card Expo. So Ooh. what are some of the great finds? I mean, look, I've it's been I went to the card expo a long time ago. I've I've kind of gotten away from the collecting. I know you're you're an avid collector. Mike has some yeah. great YouTube videos on collecting uh, some hockey cards. You should go check those out. But Mike, any any nice little finds? I did. Like, you showed I the car in the last video, so let's. Yeah, that's true. I did show the Kelma car, and I got something a little bit bigger and better than the Kelma car. Um, I guess I, I ended up picking up maybe I didn't get as much as as most people get. Like I was seeing dudes there literally coming home with like four hundred cards, <laughs> like just and not just like regular like four hundred cards of like rookies, jersey cards, autographs, patch cards, like. Not just regular old base cards, like legitimate. There is significant value to these cards. Um, I probably came home with, I think, about 10 or so. I got a couple of like variant uh, Crosby rookies. I got a Crosby um, jersey card rookie, his rookie uh, materials piece. I got a Jake Muzzin rookie auto, actually, which is kind of mm-hmm. cool. So that that's that's the least content, I suppose. Um what else did I end up picking up here? I, I put them all away. I should have kept them out here, but I put them all away in, in my boxes uh, a couple of days ago. Actually, hold on. I, I I put it on my Instagram. You can go follow my card Instagram if you guys would like. It's a Canadian card collector. Um, I can tell you exactly what I got there. Uh, I got a graded Thatcher Demko card. So that was graded 9.5, which is a pretty cool, cool card. And then I picked up, oh, an Alex Tuck rookie auto future watch rookie auto which i liked uh i got that at a pretty good price uh, a couple of sedin young guns and then the holy grail pickup that i made this weekend at the toronto expo this is this bad boy right here my friend oh no this is very how shiny do we, how do we all right uh, oh yeah no yep yeah. You're just going to have to hold, you got to hold that at a certain angle. There it is. There it is. There it is. That my friends is a Wayne Gretzky rookie. And apparently, so they say that uh, the blue lines, so probably can't see it, but there are supposed to be it. Literally won't be able to see it there, but there are blue lines at the back of them, which is most card collectors say the old story is that that means that it's part of the first print um the first print had the blue line so not only is it a graded gratsky rookie but it apparently has some signs that it also is part of the first print of gratsky rookies uh so i was pretty stoked to pick that up definitely at this point the biggest and best card that i have in my possession and that was honestly my goal when i went to the expo yesterday so i accomplished it and i'm pretty pretty happy to to have that piece in my collection. Wayne Gretzky rookie, pal. Excited about it. Pretty cool. That's a pretty snazzy card. I've that's like growing up as a kid, you always heard about the Wayne Gretzky rookie card being right. like holy grail. Right. If yeah. you get the right one. Yeah, like when I was growing up, so I have uh when I growing up, this was the holy grail for you and I. Right? The Sidney Crosby rookie card for those who are watching or listening, I guess, the the Sidney Crosby Young Guns. So that was the holy grail for me when I first started. And I never got one, but then I finally bought one last summer. And then I also bought the real grail, which is the rookie. It's a it's rated PSA four for the anyone who was curious as to what the grade was on that one. 
Uh, it's kind of, I mean, obviously there's higher grades, but Mike's also got, a, you know, he's got to live. <laughs> he no, yeah, if I want to go and get a ten, PSA 10, that's like, well, first of all, PSA 10 went for like, I think it was like $3 million. So obviously that's not, there's only like two of them in the world. Uh, but even like a PSA 6 or PSA 7, you're looking like upwards of like six to six to fifteen thousand dollars, which don't have that kind of money. <laughs> Do not have anywhere near that kind of hey, money. If we got more subscribers on locked on leads, maybe we get closer to that. Yeah. So hey, how about this? If y'all subscribe, share it, and get us to like a hundred thousand subscribers or maybe a million subscribers, maybe then I could consider buying, you know, a PSA five or a six. But for now, four was in my price range and I'm happy to have it. Um, right. enough about me, enough about me, Dave. Let's get to uh, the listener questions here. What is the first question from uh, our Locked on Leafs listeners in the first edition of the Monday morning mailbag? All right, I wanted to get this one out of the way first. Sure, this one here is from our uh, Austin, uh, Austin, awesome. Sorry, I, I don't know, I'm struggling with this. Austin Matthews, there you go. When you change the guy's name on me like that, it makes it very hard, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so he asks, will we change our goal song and get a new anthem singer? And he also mentioned that things need to be changed with the way the music is done at Scotia Bay, which I agree with that second statement. The first statement, goal song, sure, you can change that. I don't know what it's really going to do. The anthem do, you have, do, you have a, do you have an idea of what you would want to change it to? Ooh. I'm a big levels guy by Avicii. Okay. Party atmosphere at Scotia Bank. Like, That's not bad. Like how much I'm a big gimmicky, but I'm a big levels guy. If you play levels at any sporting event, you're gonna I'm gonna be, you're gonna get a, a response out of me. And you no know, what about I, I was talking uh, about this because you know how uh, Colorado, I guess this would be in terms of the second part of the question mm. where it said in-game music. You know how the Avalanche, they do like the, all the small things in the third period that they sing, and it just radiates with the building? Yeah. One for me, that would be really, really cool. It could either be the goal song or, you know, just make it a thing to do in the third period, play it every single time at like, I don't know, five-minute mark or something like that. But like Seven Nation Army by White Stripes, you get everybody just going, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that's a good, like, going into the third period or something like that. That's always a good one. So sick. That'd be so sick. So and you're not copying it from, because a lot of different sports teams do it. It's it's not it's not unique. But I will say this. But it's hype. Yes. I will say this. So I think Calgary has a really good one. I think it's, uh, it's ACDC. I'm trying to remember. Um, is it for? No. I'm trying to remember which ACD song it is now. I'll figure it out. I'm not going to waste time trying to remember. There's so many good ACDC songs. Well, what about what about the single? Because I know that uh, who's the team that's dealing with their – is it Washington? There's one team that has different uh, – depending on who scores, they all have a unique goal song similar to like a walk-up song in baseball. I think so. Yeah, there's there are teams that are doing the uh, the customized goal songs, which I think yeah. is a cool idea too because then, you know – Team I, could see the Leafs, I could see the Leafs kind of experimenting with that, with some of the personalities that they have on that team. I mean, we already know Austin Matthews is going with Justin Bieber. Probably. Probably. Uh, yeah. But it'd be interesting uh, to see. The second part of that question, yeah, Anthem sorry. Singer, how dare you? How dare you? Because she is a saint. She's the best thing the Leafs have in terms of entertainment. If we're gonna if we're gonna bash on the entertainment. If you have seen any of the anthem singers, I mean, Tampa speaks to mind. I've heard a lot of terrible Canadian anthems. The way Martina sings the U.S., the Star, Star Spangled Banner, which obviously is for the visiting team. Amazing. Like, how could what could you get that's better? The least before didn't even have a normal anthem singer. They would get like once while they had one guy who was from the army who would be there. Then they would get the fans to sing it. It's just like, wouldn't like Martina? Nothing beats a Martina Ortiz Luis national anthem. Agreed. That gets, the, the that gets Scotia Bank pumped. It's the She's only the thing that gets it pumped, ladies and gentlemen. That ain't changing. Shame on you for even suggesting to get a new anthem singer. 
Yes, how dare you? Goal song, I think we're all on board. Could you? To be fair, I'm also not, like, I don't hate Hollow Notes. It does get me grooving a little bit, but it might be time for change. However, the anthem singer, Martina, like, she's staying. She is at co sign her for the I rest think, of her life. I think we need to send this to Martina to let her know that over here at Locked On Lease, we support Martina Ortiz Luis. Yes, we do. All right. Next question in the mailbag. All right, uh, we're going to go with Mr. Bill V right now. He wants to know, expecting goal. so he's expecting both goalies to be gone. What would it take for the Leafs to get Hellebuck from the Jets? Interesting. So I I don't know why so many Leaf fans, like, think Hellebuck's available. uh, available. I, I just don't see that being the case. I mean, I I know that they're like they struggled last year, but I don't know if they're gonna tear things down. But I guess in this scenario, let's say that they are. What would it take to pry Hellebuck from the Jets? Well, a whole heck of a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, you're assuming that they're going into a rebuild, then though, if they are moving on from one of the top five NHL goaltenders, there are. So you're definitely giving up, at minimum, your first-round pick. Uh, They're probably going to want Matthew Nyes as well, your number one prospect. Probably going to want another solid young player. Like, I don't know if they really have – like, I don't think Nylander would be – because if they're looking to rebuild, I don't know if he's necessarily – because they have a guy like that. Like, they have – Nick they have Ehlers. Nick Ehlers, they have Kyle Connor. They got these skilled forwards. Like it's not the direction I think they want to go. No, defensively, do they do uh, like Lilligren? I they guess could just help on the back end, but it's yeah, like, like a Sandine and Lilligren. Like would a nice Sandine and a first get it done? Probably not. Like that that sounds like a very good package, but for Winnipeg, it's like we're giving you a guy that's a Vesna caliber goaltender. Yeah, and you have to think of what Vesna caliber goaltenders his age have right. gone gone for, right? Well, like they don't. It's, it's tough. Uh, goaltenders can go for a lot, and the goaltenders well, the can go absolutely nothing. We rarely ever see Vesna caliber goalies get traded in their twenties. Like, when was the last time that we've seen that happen? Man, like Corey Schneider. Yeah, like even that was even like, that he 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 never had, he was never a Vesna winner, but it was like okay we see it coming, so they got a first round pick out of that a top ten pick, pick. yeah turned into Bo Horvat so it turned out to be a pretty solid solid trade but like outside of him I'm trying to think the last time we have seen a Vesna goaltender in their prime get dealt and I just I'm having a tough time thinking of one. Yeah. That's the part for me is like, it's really tough to expect that to come about. Yeah. All right. uh, Let's move on to. All right. We'll go with uh, Mr. Roberto Ferrugia. Do do you think the Leafs will re-sign Hosang and give him a shot with the big club? Mm. No, I do not. First and foremost. So technically Hosang was signed to an AHL contract, right? So he was not. Uh, on a on a, a deal with the Maple Leafs. Um, but that's besides the point. Do I think they'll bring him back in? I don't think so. I, I don't they don't need another skilled guy at the end of the day. Like he he's somebody who's like a top six or bust type of player. I think they have enough of those, you know, s- skilled players that Hosang with the baggage he brings, he didn't really tear it up. He had a good first half in the AHL, and then the second half, he didn't really tear it up. I think he ended up at at well under a point per game in the AHL this year. I'll just double-check and and bring that up. He was Uh, also a hot start, and he kind of cooled down a bit. When he got back from the Olympics, things really started to go south, because I remember he was about a point-per-game player before going to the Olympics for Team Canada, and then didn't have a good Olympic showing, came back to Toronto with the Marlies, and then finished the year – 35 points in 47 games, just 16 goals. So, Not you know, terrible, but it's also like he wasn't lights out. Well, for a first rounder who's 26 years old, I, uh, you know, you're expecting him to be a, a little bit better than that, right? I, I mean, 
I was at the very least. So I, I, I think that it was nice that he got the opportunity to get an AHL deal with the Marlies. Uh, maybe they bring him back to the Marlies, but I don't think that the Leafs give him a contract. I, I just, Unless don't he care. wants to go back with the Marlies and give this another shot. like the Yeah, Leafs. which I could see that. But the Leafs? No. Nah, I, I'd be – like I would give it a 1% chance that he plays a National Hockey League regular season game with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, no, that's a tough one to see happening. All right, we will go with uh, ZZ, Kosak ZZ. All right. We got a few from him that we're, we'll try to get through. Uh, we'll do what, this one first. I thought this was the most intriguing one. What free agent would fit the mold of a Josh Henderson type player for the Leafs, which they so desperately need? And I'm not arguing against that. I think we discussed the Leafs need a guy with a little bit of bite and intensity, and we've heard that that's something the Leafs are going to target. Question is, is there a guy out there? I don't know if there's an exact Josh Anderson mold. He's quite a unique player for, you know, his blend of size and skill um, and speed at that. But is there someone out there who can do some of the similar type of things that Josh Anderson could pro- can provide? The only player, like when I'm looking at the free agent board, is Nick Paul, probably. Like, is yeah. Nick Paul the the that guy? Like, he's... He's six foot four um, or six foot three, 220 pounds. So like he's, he's a bigger stocky guy. He's got a little bit of speed to him and he's somebody who can take the puck to the net and, you know, someone who can kill penalties and he's got a little bit of size to him. So he's got the intangibles and the size factor. Sometimes he could score just like Josh Anderson, but I I still wouldn't quite put him on that level as Anderson. I don't think Uh, maybe like an Anderson light. Would be he's he's probably he's probably the closest you could find on the free agent market and yeah. Nishushkin, but even Nishushkin's not as like feisty as Anderson. No, that's the other thing, right? You're looking for a guy that's like there. He's probably also looking at the physical element that he brings, right? A guy that's gonna fight. Yeah, like he's just so unique. It's it's so difficult. He's I don't like know. Another Tom Wilson, like him and Tom Wilson are like those like unicorns that there's not many of them in the league. There no. are guys like that not many of them reach free agency because well, I mean, not only do they reach free agency but they're also just not like uh, offensively gifted like they are like there's dudes who can skate and who can hit but are they as gifted as these players are not typically no not really uh let's... why don't we take uh take one more quick break actually before we get into the rest of these mailbag questions um, and I'll tell you guys about one of today's show sponsors, and that's betonline.net. It's your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sport developments, news, and odds, including this year's NBA Finals, the NHL Conference Finals, and Major League Baseball and all, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA, UFC to boxing. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, it is where the game starts. All right, welcome back into the Lockdown Lease podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morissuti, going through your questions here on a Monday morning mailbag. Uh, Just one more reminder for you that we're going to be doing this each and every Monday throughout the duration of the play uh, or of the the offseason for the Maple Leafs. Uh, So make sure that every Friday or Saturday you're checking the Lockdown Leafs YouTube channel for the mailbag question video where we'll be soliciting questions for you and we're selecting those um those questions from that video itself so uh just a quick reminder if you next want to have your questions answered by dave and i all right let's keep it moving next question please all right we're gonna go to the discord chat because we did have a couple two questions come in there uh the guy who started our discord chat mason for king he wants to know which former leafs could you use or former leaf that was my bad. Probably typed that out wrong. Could you realistically see coming back? So I'm thinking that the a lot there's been obviously the Nazem Kadri. Mm-hmm. People would love to have Naz back. Um, who? What other former Leaf? I'm trying to think. What other former Leaf? 
is out there. I like in terms of free agent. That's the I, I'm curious what exactly that meant. Um, I know people saw that JVR post with Marner and got a little giddy, but that guy is making seven million dollars next season. Well, I'll tell you something interesting about that. I didn't see that post, but I'm glad you mentioned it mm-hmm. because in my mind, I was thinking like one thing that the Leafs need is someone to score around the net. What does JVR do best? What's the only thing JVR actually does? And that score around the net, bang at rebounds and hang out, you know, right there. And that's how you score in the playoffs. How many times would you have liked to have that guy sitting there waiting for rebounds um, against the Tampa Bay Lightning this year? I would have liked that a couple of times. Or someone who's going to drive the puck to the net. I wouldn't have minded that. So if you can get JVR at 50% retained, and you could try and get, because I think he's going into the final year of his deal, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think he's yeah, got final much. Year. Right. So Philly, I mean, they're probably yeah, no one to keep them. Yeah. Right. So maybe they're like, okay, take half of his salary off our hands. Probably not going to cost you a whole lot to do it. And you get JVR at three and a half million. You could also do like the double retain where another, if you really, really need the cap hit lower another team could take on some salary, yep. but that also gets very, very expensive if you try to go that route. Right. Then you're looking another 175. And yes, it would definitely get a little a little expensive there. But um I I, I <laughs> that's an interesting name, I guess, for, for former lease. How about Mason Marchment though? The guy that we talked about mm-hmm. earlier being a Selkie contender, I suppose. I mean, he had a great year for for Florida, um, and he's like a power four type of player that, that is, you know, plays a similar ish game, I guess, to JVR, where he can score a little bit. He's got some size. I mean, also maybe Marchman could be the uh, Josh Anderson type of I, player. You know, I, I was I was good. just about to say that that would be you could fit hit two. You can get two birds with one stone, getting your size, and also fulfill Mason's desire to get a former Leaf back. Yeah, he's six foot four, two hundred and ten pounds, and this year, um, in his first full season in the NHL, eighteen goals, forty seven points through fifty four games with the Florida Panthers. So, pretty good year, like nearly a point per game se- season for him. Um, fifty three pims as well. So, uh, he is a guy who played four games for the Maple Leafs a few years ago, and then got shipped out for Dennis Mulligan. Not one of the finer trades of Kyle Dubas's tenure, uh, nope. but he was a pretty good Marley, obviously, uh, for a few years before that. And I think maybe that's a guy they could try and, and bring in, depending on what he's looking for. But maybe Mason Marchman. Do we consider Evan Rodriguez a former Leaf? Oh, he, he... he had a cup of coffee. <laughs> And no, then he leaves is, just like no, he, didn't. he was here as a you pending UFA for a week. So no, I'm not. Well, he had a qualifying offer and the Leafs are just like, we can't qualify that. Exactly. So the no. Leafs owned his rights. No. They're just going to own it. I don't long. consider him a former Leaf. I do not. Okay. Just like Jared McCann, not a former Leaf. So, no, some no. category there. Well, at we, least McCann. McCann was on a contract. Like true. McCann, like that guy at least was like. Signed. Uh, signed as okay. opposed to being traded as a pending ufa and then they just didn't re-sign him all right there i'm just trying to also think what other former leaf could they trade for i i don't see yeah. that many because teams actually kind of like their former leaf players like you're not like hyman ain't going anywhere no freddie i mean we're not we're not revisiting that that's just that's done hey hey if you're okay if you include, if you're going to sit here and include Jared McCann and also, what was the other player, Evan Rodriguez as former Maple Leafs, what about Robin Leonard? <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I didn't think about that because I don't think that that's working in Vegas. But the thing is, can, can he handle Toronto? Well, the question was, who do we realistically see coming back anyways? And I don't see him realistically come yeah, back. I'm just trying to think of, of players. Yeah. Um, but realistically, I don't know if there's many guys. Like Mason Marchman's an interesting name, I think, because you know, he was somebody who Kyle Dubas was the AGM back when he was with the Marley. So like he was with that player. So perhaps there's a relationship there. But I have a feeling that he's gonna look to try and cash in on this big year he had with Florida. We all know that Toronto can't afford to do that. So Unless uh, we move out some other pri- other pieces and try to make room. Right, right. 
All right, another one from the Discord chat, Blue13. He's a, he's a very highly yeah. active one. I love, very. love some of the combos we have. Uh, who may be out there that is primed to be the next or to be next season's Michael Buntain? So basically low cost, high reward. Whoa. So, and Michael Bunting was a UFA six free agent. So that's that's a, a group six for UFA. That's an important thing to note there as well. There aren't many of those actually out there. There are some on the market, but eee, it's it's a tough one because that was a very analytical move by Kyle by Kyle Dubas. Like that was like he didn't produce a lot, but there was things that they liked that they saw and they they pounced on. Um, I wonder about one guy. If, a former Leaf pick that didn't stay with the Leafs because the Leafs it just they couldn't get a contract done. But like a guy like Dakota Joshua, he is he played thirty games of the Blues, had eight points in thirty games. I don't know if maybe because the Leafs have some background on him, they might consider that he's a he is a Group Six free agent. There, this is a really tough one though because. That's you're trying to hit the lottery again. Yeah, it doesn't happen that often, right? Like it, Michael Bunting was such a an interesting player, but it, you know Michael Bunting was the year before was Carter Verhage, who was a former Maple Leaf. So it's it's not that it doesn't happen. Um, it just it's it's so rare for uh, for two, I guess, for those guys to be that um, productive. Sebastian Ajo is an interesting name if you want to look at a defensive player. Yeah, I was going to say, we got to specify, this is the defenseman on the New York yeah. Rangers. Not yes, the not the New Carolina York. Hurricanes. Correct, correct. Um, Adam Brooks, who had a stint in Toronto at one point. I could totally see Adam Brooks getting signed to a deal. Yeah, but even then, like I don't, I don't see any of these guys as like the next Michael Bunting. I mean, someone who's going to have a sixty point. Like I, I remember you can go back, you can fact check me on this. But if you go back and you listen to the podcast that I did last year when they signed him at the beginning of the season, I said this guy, the way he plays, would be perfect on Austin Matthews' wing. Perfect. This is a guy who's just going to go to the net and yeah. get tips and clean up garbage. He's a Zach Hyman like. I swear we. Go and listen to the podcast from last September, last uh, July when the signing was made. So I don't, I knew, I had a feeling this guy was going to be a good player. I I didn't think he was going to be that good. Granted, Mm -hmm. you know, sixty point guy, but I knew he would, he would work out. I don't see anyone like that in this, this market. I don't know if there will be a, a, a Michael Bunting Group Six guy this week. One guy to keep an eye on if the Colorado Avalanche decide to move on from. Uh, Kiefer Sherwood. He's I I I, wa- I caught a few AHL games. It's a guy for the Colorado Eagles. He had 36 goals in 57 games, 10 points in eight playoff games. He only had 11 games. He he hasn't caught on to the NHL yet. The Leafs kind of like these like you know really good AHL players. So um, that could be another guy too to throw in there. But yeah, it's so hard. To find that next by Michael Bunting. Uh, what about? Let me just see, because it doesn't necessarily have to be a Group Six guy. It just said no, low yeah. money player. Um, and yeah. we're trying to think of under a million because that's what Bunting was. Right, right. So I'm just looking at the the list of UFAs. I mean, I don't. Yeah, he would probably sign for more than a million. It's gonna say possibly like a Nola Chari type of player, but probably sign at a mill. Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I see somebody who will be that next Michael Bunting in this year's. But that's the thing. Sometimes it happens. I also didn't see Carter Verhage being the the original Michael Bunting. Tyler Mott, but again, I think he's gonna sign for more than a million. But he's yeah. Like people know who a Tyler Mott is. Like he's not a. He's not like a guy that no one's really ever heard of, but right, exactly. So I just, yeah, to, to answer the question, or I guess to not answer the question, I don't know if there is one, uh, if there one is one out there. All right, let's uh, let's move on to back to the YouTube ones. Jeff, the Leafs fan, uh, he is asking which 
players on the current team will one day have a bronze statue of them in front of Scotiabank Arena. I think this is a pretty easy one. To go back to the first, to that other question, would you include oh, okay. Ryan Donato, who made seven hundred fifty thousand this year, as a? Well, he, okay. So if we're talking about totally, so I think he's a guy that if a team gives him the right shot, yes. Um, I, I think yeah, low risk, high reward. I think Ryan Donato could be a guy like that. Okay. Uh, so this question, why don't you answer this one first? It's Austin Matthews. Yeah. <laughs> like it is Austin Matthews, you know, yeah. he's the guy that's setting records. Like if you think of guys that are on legends row right now, um, even the newer guys, like these are guys who may not have won something with the least, but these are guys who have their names etched in Leafs history. So it's Austin Matthews. That's going to be the, he will definitely be, I, if I'm looking at current ones, he'll definitely be there. How close is Marner when it comes to this? He's not he's not too far behind, but I I think he's in a tier just below Matthews, in my opinion. Matthews is in his own tier just because of everything he's done, the expectations placed on when he got drafted and what he's accomplished. But Marner's just below that. Like I put Marner and Riley kind of in the same same tier. And this is all assuming that Matthew sticks around for another contract and yeah. continues to have success with the team, obviously. If he yeah, bolts yeah. in two years, that snake son of a bitch ain't getting no statue. No. I'll tell you that. But hopefully that doesn't you, you Your statue building privileges get revoked. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Why don't we um, – why don't we save the next few that we have? Because if there's a couple more, we could sprinkle yeah. them in throughout the week. Um, hey, you can you can even include some in the vid, in the comments below, and we'll add them. And we'll do a few more. We'll add a, a few more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so go ahead, toss some more questions, uh, and we could kind of throughout the week go back and and uh, answer some of those. But appreciate we'll every single one. Week. What's that? We will, we will get to every single one. We will do our we're not best. ignoring people. If, they, if that I know certain people might think we're going to ignore them, we will get to them, even if it's a clown question. Yes, like a Bryce Harper style clown yes. question, bro. That's Bryce Harper, right? I think so. This is who or someone at a reporter asked a question, it's like that's a clown question, bro, and moved on. <laughs> uh, that was a good one. That was years ago. That was definitely, I remember uh, our prof, Malcolm Kelly, telling us about that one he used to say that all the time yeah that was first... when he was in washington yeah that's the first years... and last time i will bring up malcolm kelly on this podcast yeah he was not thank please yeah he was 19 years old at the time 2012 yeah so... yeah 19 year olds old he probably told a 50 year old man that he it was a clown question no, it was the toronto tv reporter too oh no <laughs> I wonder who it was. <laughs> so the 19 year Harper quip, that's a clown question, bro, to a Toronto TV reporter who asked if you plan to take advantage of Canada's lower drinking age after belting a long home run and a win over the Blue Jays. Ooh. You think it was our other former prof, Shy Davidi? <laughs> no way. Shy actually has you know a, a brain. Respect. Yeah. 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 He's actually All right. All right, enough uh, enough baseball talk and old Centennial College fodder. <laughs> By the way, Bryce uh, Harper is a Mormon, so you would not even been able to drink. Interesting. I did not know that either. Thank Look you, at that. ESPN.com for all that information. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Uh, <laughs> We're going to end the podcast. We're going to end the podcast. We're going to end the podcast here before we start talking about some other stuff here. Uh, that's going to do it for us here today on the pod. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for submitting those questions. It was great. Loved answering them. Uh, and again, we're going to do it each and every Monday for the rest of the off season. So just cause the Leafs are done, the boys here at locked on Leafs, we still got it going on for the remainder of the year. Um, you can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. Also follow the show at Locked On Leafs. 
Go ahead, smash that like button here if you're on YouTube. Leave a comment as well down below. And also, if you could, leave a review if you're listening on iTunes. That would be fantastic. Uh, We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leaf.